Howdy, howdy, folks of the internet, welcome back to another edition of the Internet Show, brought to you by PTE Creative. As always, I am your host, Evan Davies. Now, today we're doing something a little bit different. It's a throwback to some earlier years or earlier days on the channel here. Today, we're going to be ranking Dragon-type Pokemon. So, uh, for those who don't know, um, this channel started completely as... Uh, Pokemon centric channel. I was doing all Pokemon related content, um, and it's something that is very near and dear to my heart. But there's a lot of things that I love outside of Pokemon that I want to share thoughts on. So that's why we've moved to PT Creative, and we've done a lot more than just Pokemon. Um, and another thing people should know is that August uh, is colloquial in our terms, kind of called Smogist. So it's a way to, uh, or Smogist, if you will, repetition or uh, pronunciation of it, in which it's a really good month to challenge yourself by drawing dragons. It's a really fun thing on the internet that a lot of artists do. Um, it's something that I'm participating in as well with our Fakemon creations every Wednesday. So every Pokemon released in the month of August for our Pokemon Bliss and Oblivion project is a dragon type Pokemon. So I thought this is a fun little tie in to do a um, little bit uh, of a nice change of pace show for us as we're getting into a lot of more heavy topics or uh, heavy, heavy. Um, projects in terms of pieces all coming together to do them. So I thought this would be a nice little change of pace. So I'm accompanied by my Dragon Zord and my Dragon Dagger already for Smogist. And today we're going to be ranking fully evolved Dragon Pokemon to have some fun. And so for our audio listeners, I'll be calling out every Pokemon as I do it. Visual, you'll get to see it right here and now. So let's get to it. as I activate my camera for those on uh, <laughs> watching so you don't just see me go glazed. Alrighty, so let's get right on to it. Our ranking system here today is quite a bit of fun. Uh, our S ranking is our top, which is one of my favorite Pokemon. I do know that it's spelled the British way, not the uh, American English way, so I took someone else's list to help me out here, so I kept their spelling. Uh, changed some of their categories, though. A, great B, it's good, not great. C is going to be very mid. D, wish it was mid, <laughs> wished it was mid. And E, politely, get wrecked. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun to do this. How I'm going to be ranking these today, um, really it's all preference. Do I like them or not? But a lot of my preferences come down to personal uh, choices of design. Um, how I feel about them, how they operate in the game will help as well. Um, and some of their impact will be felt, um, even though... I don't put a ton of that unless it's just undeniable. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin with Altaria. And these Pokemon are all in uh, alphabetical order. So we're going to go Altaria from Gen 3, which is the Hoenn region. Uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I I'm going to put Altaria right here in the good, not great category. Uh, fun design with the clouds. Mega Altaria also very fun. Um, it's a different design for a dragon, which I, I think very interesting that they didn't go classic lizard style dragon they went more of that asian um bird inspired dragon here so it's a fun design i'm gonna go with a good not great now we go to one of my favorites my heavy hitters uh appleton and he is from gen 8 or they are from gen 8 i should say this pokemon this is absolutely genius genius design work that's going straight to the s category um this has so many good design elements in it with the apple shell going over the eyes so it, it looks kind of uh, sleepy and derpy very derpy pokemon um but great design work of incorporating an apple pie into this uh getting some flair into the of the region's inspiration into the pokemon a lot of baking and patisserie as we should all know from the great British breaking show uh, you know the uk is the obvious basis uh, for Gen 8's Galar region, so it's fun to see that tied in. So it's a great tie-in Pokemon, really well designed, extremely cute and adorable. Who doesn't love Appleton? If you don't like Appleton, get wrecked. Uh, we're going to go in a, in a different direction here. Uh, Archaladon or Archaladon, depending on your location here. Uh, brand new from the DLC of uh, Gen 9. Um, Archaladon... My biggest issue is 
It's just a lot. I'm going to go with a D here. Um, if you look at its back, it looks like a staple remover. But then it also looks like it could have a bridge and it could be a cityscape on it. Um, it's just a, a whole heck of a lot going on. Not quite sure what to make of it. Uh, it looks imposing. It, it looks like it's fearsome, but what the hell it is, I don't really know. Uh, and I'm not really into that kind of monster design. So I'm going to go D wishes it uh, now we go to Bax Caliber. Bax Caliber, uh, pseudo legendary of Gen 9. Um, love the fact that we got a Dragon Ice typing. Don't really understand the design work to it. I I'm going to go. I hate to say it again. I, 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 It's cruising between C and D. I'll give it the benefit of the note right now. Uh, Bax Caliber for me is very mid. Um, in no way, shape, or form do I think it's lazy designing. It's just not a design that really draws me. And it's a Pokemon that, unless you're really attempting to like really do something with it in the game, you're not going to get it to make it worthwhile. There's other pseudo-legendaries in these games that you're really making an effort to get because they're early enough in the game that they're worthwhile to make the pursuit. Bax Calibur does not feel that to me, so I'm going to see. We've got a Cyclozar. Um, Cyclozar politely get wrecked in the E category. Here's my issue as a cycler. It's not inherently a stupid design. Um, I don't personally like it, but it's not inherently stupid. My issues with it is it just feels less than. With the tire in the chest, it's a, theoretically supposed to be uh, an ancestor or paradoxical in design, whether they want to admit it or not, to uh, Koridon and Miraidon. But the the tire in the chest and not having the ancient ways to it or the or the future paradox ways to it it just it feels lackluster at best so i'm gonna go politely get wrecked now we're getting to a heavy hitter for some folks dialga um dialga is a difficult one for me it is imposing um it's definitely fun very interesting and unique it, um, unique format to drawing this Pokemon. Um, definitely feels like we're getting into the era of let's let's go big, big, big design uh, versus simplistic here, which I don't have an issue for if it's supposed to be the Lord of Space, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go B. It's good. It's not great. It doesn't... Sinnoh in general is not a huge point of inspiration for me. Um, all Pokemon's great, but it's not... Sinnoh's not inherently my favorite, so I don't have as much tie to that region, so that's why I'd give it a B. Oh, God. Origin form Dialga. Um, wishes it was mid. Um, what the hell is... Nah, screw that. It, it's going to politely get wrecked. Way too overdesigned. Doesn't make sense. It, it should be... My opinion, you're you're trying to get to this ancient form. It's origin form. If it's space like, either go more space or go very simplistic and make it like the like the cauldron that time was founded in. Or space was founded in and how it expanded. Don't go this weird amalgamation thing that just doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna go politely get wrecked. Uh Dracovish. Um, and I'm going to put Dracozolt with it together. They're both going into Wishes. It was mid in the D category. Um, they're Gen 8 Fossil Pokemon. I do think the the gimmick of mixed match, matched fossils is actually a fun and unique little gimmick for them to try. I do think that is fun. I think it's unfortunately one of the final nails in the coffin of the fossils that Pokemon that we've seen in... Um, the Pokemon franchise, though, a little bit difficult for me. Uh, it's just the gimmick is, the idea is fun, the execution is not my favorite, so that's why I go both Dracovish and Dracovzolt. D. Wishes it was mid. They could probably, and looking from their pieces as well, both feel like they would be very mid for me if we got the fully formed creature as opposed to the mix matched fossil creature that we got. Uh, so I'm going to go D. Now we go to one that I think is a really underrated Pokemon, uh, and it's Dragalge. 
I think Drag Algae is such a unique design. I'm going to put it all the way up in the A category. I love the idea of this imposing poisonous dragon type made of kelp. I think that's A, ingenious. A really, also really smart for the region that it was founded in, uh, having those coastlines that are really cool. Because yeah, I think Drag Algae is, honestly, Drag Algae is still Gen 6 and not Gen 7, which would make a little bit sense but i love the fact that i don't know about you guys i'll be fully honest here although i love adventuring i love i love going by the coast and, and seeing things uh i do have an open fear <laughs> i do have fear of uh open ocean and open water and the ocean's weird and the ocean's kind of creepy and when you start getting to those kelp forests it's really really fun to start swimming in them when you start feeling comfortable but when you are when you are First, swimming in a kelp forest, especially for someone who has a fear of the open water. Yeah, that's fucking creepy as hell. And you think that any time something could come out and get you. So, to have a Pokemon design based on that is fucking brilliant. It's genius. And I adore that about it. So, I'm going to go A. Great. Great Pokemon design here, really smart, kind of based off of Kelpie as well. Really, really great. Um, and it, is it perfect? No, but it's damn close. I think it's really good. Uh, and then we're going to go to one of my absolute favorites here. Uh, we're going to Dragapult. Dragapult is an absolute S. Uh, Ghost Dragon type has not been done enough. I think it's incredibly genius. And I love the way to do it. It gives it the ghosty tail, but it has launching uh, dragons coming out of it. Um, it has kind of a dinosaur vibe to it, which is another reason why I would explain why it has this ancient ghostly feel to it. And it's logical that if you're launching these things as rockets, they would also be dead <laughs> upon impact. So it's a really brilliant move to do it. It's got a cutesy nature to it. By far, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Pokemon from the last two generations of Pokemon is definitely Dragapult. Dragapult is a fixture on all of my teams now. Um, it's just such a good typing and such a fun Pokemon to have. Love Dragapult. Absolute S here for me. Uh, now, here's a kind of crazy thing we're going to go to. Dragonite. Um, I'll go B. It's good, not great. Um, I'm not huge on Dragapult or on um, Dragonite, frankly. I, I think it's honestly, it's a downgrade from Dragonair, which I think is near perfection. I love Dragonair's design. However, very fun, very friendly. Do love the fact that it, the personality that's been given um, as a really tough guy, but at the same time really fun, loving, and kind goes with the design work really well that they did for the finished product of Dragonite. So I do appreciate those elements of it. Um, it's not the fierce destroyer that it was meant to be early on. It's far more that friendly, kind dragon that can wreck ship if it decides to. Um, but it's a B. It's a fun design, a little straightforward, but different than what you're expecting. Another really good design here. Uh, it's going to go crazy for some people, though. Uh, Drampa, I'm going all the way to the A category. What a genius way to get something different. Um, I think that as the dragon typing has expanded, especially since Gen 3 when dragons kind of exploded onto the scene, or seemingly uh, exploded onto the scene. Um, you need a way to make dragons more unique. This is a great way to play into the dragon design while also making something that's a little less great intimidating factor and far more of a kind dragon that you could... You could see wisdom in as a, from an ancient tale, and a really fun way to play at an idea of an ancient dragon. Make it a grandpa, uh, and have those design elements. I really, really think Drampa is a highly underrated. I'm gonna go with the A category. Great. Oh God, what is this thing? Uh, Dredagon. Oh boy. Um, Dredagon's a C for me. It's very mid. Uh. This feels like what people believe 12-year-old boys want in their Pokemon. It's spikes and claws and 
bold color. Like that's what Redagon feels like to me. Um, Gen 5 a lot. I think Gen 5 is uh, a poorly designed generation for the most part. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, and Dredagon reflects that for me. It's very mid. It's a C. Uh, Duraladon. Improvement over uh, Archaladon, my opinion. I think it's something a little bit better. Uh, I, I'm going to go into the still very mid, though. It doesn't it doesn't trip my trigger. It doesn't... To quote my wife here, it doesn't get my pussy wet. Uh, <laughs> and that is a direct quote, my friends. That's not something that ever escapes my mouth um, by itself. However, I think what's really unique and interesting about uh, Duraladon is the Gigantamax Swarm helps it a little bit. It is fun to get a Steel typing with this Pokemon and make it kind of unique and different, and it's not just this flying behemoth Steel thing. It is a little bit more of a, a cartoony s throwback while also trying to be intimidating. So it, it's an interesting thing to see with uh, Duraladon with the C in the very mid category. Uh, Eternatus. This thing I actually do like a bit. It's uh, good, not great in the B category. Love the idea of the poison dragon typing. And I like the fact that this feels very intangible. Doesn't feel, it feels alien. And if you're going to do something alien, you either need to make it really fun, really endearing, or you need to make it really alien. Um, Storyline-wise, they needed something very alien to explain the Gigantamax phenomenon. Uh, I think Eternatus is a great way to do that. It, it feels like a Pokemon that you should not be able to control and something very foreign and off-world-ish. So I, I think it's a good design. Um, it doesn't... I don't go crazy for it, but still a good design. Hello, an executor. Uh, I'm going to go to B here simply for goofs. The fact that it just grew a long, long ass neck and became a dragon type is so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's so fucking ridiculous. However, I will say, it makes me laugh and there's something endearing about it. So, I mean, shit, there's something fun about it. So. I'll go to good, not great. It's it's for laughs. It's for goofs. Um, and it's also a good differentiator immediately to what is a regional variant. Instead of, we're going to change all its colors and change all its typings and all this kind of stuff. What if we just gave it a big neck and made it a dragon? It, it's kind of an interesting, fun idea. Uh, so it goes to good. Not... Flapple. Flapple's another really good one. I really appreciate Flapple. Uh, fun design work here. Doesn't feel like this great imposing thing but feels like a fun little powerful beast when it chooses to be because it's now spread its wings and flies and uses its former shell to its advantage. Uh, I think that's really smart design work on Flapple, which is why it's going to go straight to the great category of A. Um, I am biased towards that whole line. I'll be fully admit that, but I think it's because it's a very intelligent way to do things. You know, and use classic plays on ideas like, oh, the worm and the apple. Um to, you know, the worm and the apple, to, oh, it's an apple pie, to it's this, it's, it's that. It's, it's just fun. It's just a fun way to do things and, and enjoy them. So, great idea. Ooh, we're getting some heavy hitters up here. Uh, Flygon. Flygon's an A. Genius design, really good way to differentiate by getting a dragonfly. Love the fact that it does have a different typing with the ground type as well so it, it makes sense as to why it's it's a desert based thing the visors on it is is great um flygon would certainly be one that i could even consider up to an s possibly um such an appealing pokemon and yet it, it because of its its green and red color scheme it still feels like it fits the tropical vibe of hoenn really well it just fits in hoenn so well through its design work that's what it should be doing Every Pokemon, unless you're intentionally going for something very foreign or very out there, do your story basis of your game. To me, every Pokemon should fit your region very well because it makes logical sense as to what the region is. I love the fact that Flygon just feels like it's part of Hoenn, even though Hoenn's known as this big tropical region with you know, a ton of water. A ton of water. <laughs> and all these different things, and yet it fits. I, I love Flygon's design. Uh, Garchomp. That's another one that has really aged well for me. At first, I used to hate 
Garchomp. Now I come to like Garchomp a lot. The Land Shark with the Rocket Head. At first, I absolutely despised, but getting more of that Hammerhead, turning into a Land Shark, and still having these weird fin claws. There's just something about it that's appealing and enjoyable. That is something I give Sinnoh. Is Garchomp turned out to be pretty, pretty fucking rad. Um, and it's not overdone, but it's just on the edge. So there is something fun to it. Um, absolutely adore, adore Garchomp's design work here. And it's something that in the past year especially, but past two years, three years, but past year especially, really grown on me. Um, now, this is an obvious one. Giratina, I'm taking both forms straight up to S. Uh, Giratina in its altered form and its origin form. It's Pokemon Satan. Need I say fucking more? And if you are listening to our previous show on the Onoda Movie Show, Satan is good. Satan is our pal. If you've seen the Burbs episode and the crossover of the la- last week's show as well. So, Ghost Dragon, Pokemon Satan. Design work is beautiful. The The... Really, really torn up wing look. Oh, chef's kiss glory. All hail our Lord and Savior. Love Giratina. Um, whew. Then we go to Gudra. I, Gudra really didn't do much for me. I'm going to put it in the very mid category. Both, both that and the Hisui and Gudra. Um, I, the idea of Gudra is something I could be interested in. The execution of the idea is what very much gets me into, eh, okay. So that's where I'm at, Gudra. I know it's popular because of the anime. It's just never really trips my trigger. Uh, Gouging Fire is a different story altogether. Um, I adore Entei. I think Entei is a great Pokemon design. Uh, I'm going to go to... I'll go up to the A category, honestly, with the dragon typing of Gouging Fire. I still prefer Entei, but I like that this looks like some ancient king version of Entei. This is what I think, if you're trying to make something look more savage, they did make Entei look more savage with uh, the more puffy cloud tail and the crown look to it. Um, Gouging Fire is pretty fun. Um... So it's an interesting design work. I still prefer Entei. I think Entei is your perfection. Um, but Gouging Fire is an interesting choice. And a good design. That crown work does look fucking rad. Uh, Guzzlord. Uh, C, very mid. Uh, nah, actually, no, I'm going to take it up to B. I think it's a good execution. It's not something I personally am like in love with. But... It looks foreign, it looks alien, it introduces Ultra Beast, which does help that it makes it this, you know, Lovecraftian monster devourer. That's actually a pretty cool idea, and it's a good execution of that idea. Um, it's not inherently what I would have done, but it's, but that doesn't matter, frankly. Um, you know, I'm glad that you guys are here listening, <laughs> getting my opinion on it, but uh, it, Pokemon, I, I'm evaluating based on what Pokemon gives us. It's a cool design to get there. It's, it's going to be in the good, not great category. Alrighty. Ooh, Haxorus. Um, this is going to probably upset some people. Haxorus to me is a, is a D. It's a wishes it was mid. Um, again, Drodagon problem. It feels like, what, what, do, what does a 12-year-old boy want in their Pokemon? I want a dragon with swords and axes on it on its head and it's it it just doesn't work for me um i know there are people out there that do really like haxorus i'll unfortunately i'll give i'll give you a wrestling parlance doesn't work for me brother um so we're gonna go d on that one meanwhile we have another one that i think is tremendous and that is hydrapple oh i'm close on both um Honestly, I'm going to put S for Hydrapple. Really fun design here. Uh, great way to Im- to continue the Diplin line and the um, Applin line in a really unique and fun way. Um, to just make things different, but 
I love the variations of it. That's one of the things that's so smart about that line with Applin and Diplin is you have all these different ra- variations of what could become of the worm and the apple and, and the storytelling aspects behind it and becomes this great dragon. But how does it become a great dragon on all these different forms? It's really fun idea work and the idea of a hydra inside of an apple. Fucking genius. Um, Hydraga. I'm going to go to... Uh, it's pretty rad. I, you can't lie. Um, I'm going to go to A. Really fun design here. Fun to get the Hydra back-to-back with Hydrapple. Um, Hydragon, I love the color scheming. Very dark. Um, the typing works for it as well. It's an interesting nod. The only thing I would say that holds it back in-game is obviously the level cap at 65. Um, but not the level cap, but the, the level to all that. So that's a problem. But design-wise... Super cool, super fun, interesting Pokemon to to work with. Um, ooh, one of my absolute favorites. I adore Kingdra. Kingdra might be a top ten Pokemon all time for me. Uh, easy S territory. Easily one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, in this line, I, I, I'm someone who generally I don't think Dragon Pokemon's are Dragon Pokemon's. Dragon Pokemon are all that great. Um, it's not my favorite typing. Uh, there are some that are extremely cool, and then there are a lot of them for me that I'm kind of like, okay, you know, on a basis of dragon Pokemon alone, a lot of these Pokemon are getting rated higher than they would because they're against competition that I don't think is is that great. Um, however, if we were going against the whole of Pokemon designs in general, a lot of dragon types, to me, would be lower. Kingdra does not fall into any of that. Kingdra is an absolute genius design. Taking that horsey and Seedra combination that was underutilized in Gen 1, and it's the first, it's one of the first real good uh, build upons of an unfinished idea in all of Pokemon that I absolutely adore. Um, being, um, oh god, Claire's Ace in Blackthorn is tremendous. I fucking adore Kingdra. And if you're interested and want to go over to the Fakemon region, there is a Mega Evolution Kingdra available to see, which is one of my prides and joy because I absolutely adore Kingdra. So really fun to get Kingdra on here. Absolute S. Chef's fucking kiss. Kingdra's amazing. Oh, Jangmo, Hakamo. Hakamolo, I think is what this is. Um, fun design work here. I'm going to go B. Good, not great. Um, I'm just quick Google to see the name. Um, uh, 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 wrong name. No. Not Hakamolo, not Jangmolo. It's the last one. Kamolo, Jesus Christ. Como. Um, really, really adore the fighting aspects to it. It looks like it's ready to brawl. Really appreciate that and the design work telling you, showing you the typing um, is, a, is appreciated to me. And the scaled armor look is pretty fucking rad. Fits the island vibe too. It's just fun. Fun Pokemon. I, I, I think it's great, great work to design. So I'm going to go good, not great on the B category though. Um, Coridon. Uh, I am going to skip ahead and do Muridon right away. No, actually, no, I won't, because there are some variations that I, I think are important here. Um, Coridon. Uh, very mid to me. There are some things that I absolutely adore about Coridon, and I still can't get over the stupid tire in the chest. It drives me insane. Um, it was, to me, it's a Pokemon design for a flawed purpose. That's my big issue here is I don't think you need a Pokemon with a wheel on its chest to ride across the plains of Aldea. I think you could have easily done it in a running feature or anything else, and why does it have that then if it's still going to use its legs? It's a really stupid design choice, in my opinion. Um, maybe a rounded chest could have worked to hint at where it was going. Fine. Um, but spike tire, like an ATV tire... Or, you know, an off-roading vehicle doesn't make it for me. But I love the feather dress at the top. Um, I love the, the spiked feather look 
at near its hind parts. Love the big whirling cable um, hairs coming off of its head. Really fun design work here. Um, but it's flawed execution in the middle for me, so it becomes very mid, because there's fun things that are redeeming here. It's just not tremendous to see stupid tire chest. Um, I'm going to go C, very mid. And here's going to be our final. Um, I'll do all three together. Um, Kiram. Kiram is a fun, interesting design. I'll go to B because it looks alien and foreign because it is alien and foreign. Uh, so that's fun. And I love the idea. It's it's the absence of pretty much anything, which is why it's, it's cold-hearted. Ice dragon typing is really fun uh, and a really unique idea. And then to get fusion materials, um, they look a little bit overdone, which is why I'm going to put both white and black Kiram into the same category of B, good, not great. Uh, but you can't deny the design works very, very cool. It's just sometimes over-designed for me really takes it down, and I would argue both are over-designed, um, and that's not inherently great. Uh, but still, really fun design work here. It fits the character well, and I like the the weird fusion material style of that Pokemon as, it, as it's a gimmick to work with uh, Reshiram and Zekrom. I think that's fun idea work, so I think Kiram does its job and is a good but not great Pokemon. Um, now we're going to take a quick pause for the cause, folks, so we're going to get right back to our second half of rankings, but before you do that, you're seeing a lot of cool Pokemon, which is absolutely great on this one. How about, go get you some Pokemon for yourself, and head on over to our Etsy shop, ptecreative.etsy.com. There you can find all kinds of cool merchandise that will help support the channel. A lot of Pokemon merchandise. You can see for it yourself right here. We have Pokemon mystery packs. We have shirts. We have hoodies, stickers. A lot of fun stuff here. And new stuff is coming very, very soon. Just fun to be around. And we have stuff that's not Pokemon related. If you're, it's not inherently what's calling you. We have more football stuff coming soon as we're getting ready for football season. We have Power Ranger stuff. We have Harry Potter stuff. All kinds of really cool things. Uh, something to just motivate yourself. Get yourself a sticker, hoodie, hat t-shirt, whatever works for you. So head on over etecreative.etsy.com. Go get yourself a really fun, cool piece of merch and support the channel while you're at it. Let's get back on to it, folks. And get to our second half of our rankings. Uh, these two are pretty similar. Latios and Latias, I think, go immediately into the great category. Um, the Jet Rocket idea here that's used, but it's not inherently... There's something that about Reshiram's tail that actually does bother me that's kind of like Jet Engine-like, um, where this one is done really, really well. It looks like a rocket. There's something a little bit more unique about it um, with the Bulbous thing, but it still looks like a dragon that has a lot of fun, and the two characters working together in Latios and Latias is fun. Um, it's just very, very interesting to get Latias there and get Latios around it as well operating as one the tandem idea is really really fun in hoenn it's a little bit under it's underutilized in my opinion because you really get puzzle minin and then you get uh volbeat and lumis as counterparts but latias and latias feel far more like partners and it's done really well in the design work as well so I, i'd go a to great um fun design here and legendary they look like legendary pokemon that's another thing you look at some of these legendary Pokemon, Giratina, that looks like a legendary. Uh, Gouging Fire does look legendary. Latios and Latios do feel that way. I mean, Guzzlord, it's not legendary, but Ultra Beast definitely does that. Dialga has that feel. You know, Kiram definitely does have that feel to it. Where, you know, Koridon does have it, but the origin form just looks like trash. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So, it's an interesting way to to play. Uh, these two look like a little bit more simplistic, but fun legendaries to get on your team. So you want to get that as a part of what you can do. Uh, Miraidon. Uh, it goes to good, not great. I do prefer Miraidon to Koridon. I like more elements of Koridon, but as an overall execution of a design, I prefer Miraidon. Um, which, my biggest thing with Miraidon is it's far more of a cohesive design that hides the tire, I know I'm, I'm sounding really crazy, but this feels like what the future could do to a Pokemon. 
Um, that's what I like about Miraidon, and the electric typing with the dragon is also such a unique and interesting typing to get um, that I, I find it really, really fun to see. So Miraidon goes to good, not great. The color scheme also just is straight fire. You gotta admit that. That's really cool. Uh, Neganadal. Uh, or Neganadal. Hmm. Uh, I'll go to B, good, not great. It does feel alien. It does feel uh, like it's imposing. It's kind of got a little Digimon to it, which I don't think is inherently great, but it kind of works as an Ultra Beast. Um, so, interesting way to do things. Again, fun typing. That makes sense with the Poison Dragon typing. The needle mark to it, playing on people's fears. That is something I think that's really fun about Guzzlord and... Uh, Neganadal or Neganadal. So, interesting choice here for that one. Like the design work on Pokemon. Good, not great. Uh, Noivern, same deal. Um, part of me wants to move Noivern up. I could see it. Eh, you know, I'm going to move him up to, to great. Uh, I think the overall parts of be creating a Bat Dragon is dope. And using the sound waves as a central idea to it. Really, really fun with those hypersonic hearing ears that it has, but it has more imposing dragon wings with a bat flavor to them than a, just a bat wing. Uh, I absolutely adore bats. I'm obsessed with Batman. Um, I think they're wonderful, wonderful Pokemon. A lot, great theming for anything you're really trying to do. And this is a really cool execution to get that and still get that fur in there so it's a little bit more accurate to the, to the actual animal itself. Really fun idea and concept. Uh, colors I would do is slightly different, but interesting flair choices of color. Um, great design. Palkia. Um, good, not great. Feels like a legendary. Feels like something ancient and crazy. Really appreciate that. Feels like it could be the Lord of Space or Time. Um, very interesting. Um... I wish I had more to say about Dialga, or I'm sorry, Palkia, but it's just, it's cool. It's good. It's, it's why it's in the B category. Uh, meanwhile, Origin Form. Um, this isn't as offensive to me, so I'm going to put it into D. Um, the horse-like ideas of it, I don't hate. Losing arms doesn't make sense to me. I think it should be full centaur with arms. You know, wing wing arms, kind of like Alkia already has. Um, but this feels more origin than Dialga's form. Dialga's form feels almost like trash compactor Pokemon. Um, whereas, you know, Palkia's form at least feels a little bit more tangible, which Something ancient should still feel tangible. Um, so I, I agree with the origin form um, idea. I just think it's a flawed concept, but I do like pieces of it. So we'll go to D, wishes it was. Raging Bolt. Uh, this hurts my feelings. Um, because Raikou is a phenomenal Pokemon, and I'm a super Gen 2 stan. I have to admit that. Um... Um, I'll still go very mid because there's something just fun and endearing about it, even though I, it's stupid. Um, turning in Raiko into a giraffe, into a weird giraffe dragon, really throws me off that I'm not crazy about. However, the fun neck with a big cloud around it almost looks like an inner tube. It, there is something unique and fun about it, so it'll go to very mid. Um, a lot of flaws in it in the design there. Uh, Rayquaza, this is simple and easy. Lord of the Sky, one of our saviors. Absolutely adore Rayquaza. Mega Rayquaza is even cooler, especially shiny Mega Rayquaza. Um, pff, get the fuck out of here. Rayquaza is so dope. Such a unique take on dragon, a serpentine Aztec style dragon. It's hard to beat Rayquaza. It's really hard to beat Rayquaza. Uh, it's, I would argue, a flawless design as well. And again, it fits Hoenn so well. Uh, it just works well. Um, but we're going to move. Reggie Drago. Um, 
I'll go B. It's good, not great. It's a fun dragon design. It's a different way to do a dragon. Um, it does the job of the Reggies, which I, I'm not wowed by any of the Reggies. I think it's a great concept that's never fully invested upon as it should be to make it better. But it, it's an orb with... It's got a cool dragon mouth for arms, though, so that is fun. Reshiram. That is... I'll go up to A for Reshiram. This is a Pokemon I used to despise, and it's grown on me. It's leaves out of S because I'm not crazy about the jet tail, but it's a really fun and unique way to do a dragon, and you can see that for me. I like that Kingdra... I love Kingdra. I love um, Dragapult. I really, really enjoy Flygon and Garchomp because and Noivern because they're unique ways to present a dragon. I think Reshiram has that. There is a little bit of that never-ending story vibe to it, which is fun, but uh, great Pokemon to have at your disposal. Really fun design with the white, all white aspects of it. Beautiful. Roaring Moon. This thing looks like a savage. Uh, I do enjoy that. There are elements I wish were a little bit better, but it'll go up to the A category. It's great. I love the piercing arrow style wings with the with half moon. That's fucking dope. So Roaring Moon is a total savage. We're gonna go A. Salamance. Um Salamance to me is in that V category. Salamance to me feels like an early dragon type Pokemon where it's like, draw me a dragon that is a Pokemon. You get Salamance. It's still a fun design. It's still cool. But I think it's a lesser design than some of its counterparts of its own generation, for certain. Um, and it loses a little bit of luster, where I think Roaring Moon really brings up the cool aspects of it. Salamance and brings them to life. Whereas <laughs> um, Salamance by itself is, it is dragon. That's what it is. So it's good. It's not great. Tatsugiri. They're all three are going into the very mid for me. Um, I like the fact that there's a wimpier style dragon. I like the fact that it has a counterpart in Don Dozo. Um, but it's sushi. And it's very mid. So all three are very mid. <laughs> I wish I had more to say about Tetsukiri, but that's what it is. Uh, Turtonator. This is a really interesting and weird design that I, I'm going to move into the B category, honestly. Um, Turtonator is such a weird, weird Pokemon, and you kind of need those to balance it out, especially when you're basing a lot of this off of nature, because there's just a lot of weird, weird animals in nature, so you might as well use them to your advantage. Uh, so Turtonator is an interesting design. Really cool shell work here. Face is a little weird, but uh, this to me feels like a better execution of Magmar than Magmar. So, I'm working with it. Tyrantrum. Oh, that's tremendous. Love Tyrantrum. Total S. Making a king dragon out of a T-Rex. Again, using things that are not inherently dragon but could be dragon and turning them into a dragon. All for it. Beautiful. Great work there. Um, giving it the royal king design with the flared neck, with the crown, with the big bearded look uh, jaw. Oh, tremendous. Tremendous. And to get a, a, a dragon rock Pokemon, again, unique typing. Great. Love Tyrantium. If you don't like Tyrantium, I have a personal beef with you. And we got a walking wake. This is a Pokemon I originally hated uh, and have come to grown to appreciate um i'm gonna go as far as great now a lot of people would if you go back into the channel's history i think there is still a, a ranking of legendary pokemon walking wake was out but gouging fire and raging bolt were not what i originally hated about walking wake was suicune is one of the most majestic beautiful pokemon ever designed and just really, really fits the aesthetic of what you're trying to do to make something special. And then to make Walking Wake this weird savage raptor thing feels like a downgrade on a great Pokemon. And I still prefer Suicune's design. I still think Suicune is a top tier design Pokemon. But to have a Walking Wake really fit this more ancient savage mold and to play off of that is a really interesting design. 
And inherently, when you think paradox, it doesn't mean it's a direct ancestor to it. It just means it could be of a, a parallel dimension, parallel universe, multiverse kind of thing. Um, so to get this really weird flippy tail, walking wake, water dragon thing, it, it works pretty well. Um, so I'm here for it. Great design for walking wake. Zekrom. Zekrom's a little harder to define. Sorry, folks, that this is on the black background, um, but the white background doesn't look as well <laughs> on this. Uh, Zekrom's a B. Doesn't have the same appeal as Reshiram to me. Um, a little bit more rounded. It feels more like I'm armored Batman um, kind of design, which you'd think I'd love, but it's actually not as crazy about it that way. Um, it feels more futuristic, where Reshiram feels more ancient, which is another good distinction for the two um i just think you need more elements and you need more color and element in there to really bring that design home i don't think zekron has it but it's a good design to start so it's a b with a good if not and our final two um zygarde is a really interesting case for me that's going straight to good not great to get the z dragon look is really interesting and to me that should that feels like a complete final Pokemon. But then to go all the way to the complete form, and it's more of this knight, it's a really interesting concept to get both a dragon and a knight, you know, hero thing in it against each other, but they're the same thing. It's a really unique, interesting vibe to play with, um, and fun little nods to creation. Complete form to me feels very Digimon-esque, which is not something I want in my Pokemon. I want... Digimon to be a Digimon, I want Pokemon to be Pokemon. Um, but they're a really unique, interesting thing that has a scientific element to it, feels off and feels weird, but yet is still cool and unexplored. Um, and kind of not having Pokemon Z makes it really feel like this is an untapped legend that obviously we're going to get in uh, Pokemon Legends ZA. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting form to think about. Um, but it's a good, not great Pokemon with potential. But there you have it, folks. That is every single fully evolved Dragon type Pokemon. Now let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight in the S category. That's a lot more than I thought I'd probably put. We're already up to thirteen in in the great category, which is fun. 19 and good, not great. You have a full 10. It, granted, Tatsugiri is the same thing, it's just different colors. Um, and very mid. 5Ds wishes it was mid, and E, politely get wrecked to both Cycles are and Origin Form Dialga. Fair. Fair. I think those are all very fair rankings for all of them. Um, overall, dragon typings are cool, they're interesting. Um, and when you get all the dragons together, it feels like a lot of... Some of it feels very one-note, but it's an interesting concept to look at, and which is why it's fun. Especially when you're trying to design Pokemon yourself, or you're an artist yourself, these exercises help me a lot, because it makes me see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong to make each Pokemon unique, or each character unique. When you put them all together, they all feel too one-note, um, and some of the dragons have that for me. The ones that don't are the ones that really cruise up the rankings. Uh, as you guys saw and heard on the pod. But overall, fun time ranking these Dragon-type Pokemon. And if you guys want to have even more fun for yourselves with more content, go check out the rest of our channel, man. We got stuff Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday now, not just Monday through Friday like you see on screen. Monday, you get Pokemon card pack opening. So if you want to stay in that Pokemon realm, we're here for you. Tuesday, it's the Onetta Show. You're already here. You already know it. You already love it. A lot of rotating topics. Next week... I believe we're going to have another crossover episode, which is going to be fun. But a lot of fun times over here on the Oneta Show. We cover gaming, we cover sports, we cover entertainment, media, all kinds of stuff. So go check out the Oneta Show. Very, very fun. And that is also available on Spotify. Wednesday, it's Pokemon Bliss and Oblivion Project. This is sort of a tie-in to that. The smoggest art event, which is near and dear to my heart. But you can see all kinds of cool Fakemon. And, and... What's real freaking cool is that we just released an Eevee type, Eevee, Eeveelution Dragon type, which is really, really fun. 
Uh, so go check that out. we got more dragons coming your way, so go check that out on the Pokemon Bliss and Oblivion Project. Thursday, we are in the middle of the Oneta Football Show's NFL expansion. Get ready for the NFL season on Thursdays. The Oneta Football Show, really fun stuff. It's fun to ask the question, what would happen if the NFL expanded to 40 teams? That's what we're doing on the show right now. Go check that out. Then Friday, it's all the rotating shows. We have the Oneta Adventure Show, the Oneta Brick Builder Show, Pokemon Card Pack Openings, Yu-Gi-Oh! Card Pack Openings, Lorcana Pack Openings, and more specials are coming your way in the next couple months. So go check out Fridays and Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Go check out the Oneta Movie Show. It's a great new podcast. A lot of fun topics coming your way. Very interesting stuff coming your way, if you will, baby. We just tried to fix Batman versus Superman. We're doing a top 10 comic book movies. We're doing a lot of different things. Cult classic series always has tie-ins here to the Oneta movie, uh, to the Oneta show. But a lot of fun topics. Get some good movie recs. Get some opinions on movies that you may have never seen. Find something for yourself. Go check out the Oneta movie show every Saturday. And all three of our podcasts are available on Spotify as well. So if you want to take it on the go and don't want to watch, you just want to listen, they're all available to you right there. So go check it out on Spotify. That is going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. It is appreciated. If you did like it, like, comment, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, leave us a review if you're on Spotify. And stay up to date on all of our stuff. Use our socials, TikTok and Instagram to connect a little bit more you get a little bit more extra content a little fun stuff there so go check that out you're probably getting a lot of updates of uh the great state of alaska as i'm traveling through there right now it's pre-recorded to make sure you guys got a great show uh but stay in touch there it's really fun to do and as always if you could check out etsy it's a really cool place to be and support our channel you could do all those things we'll love you forever we'll still like you even though you don't but Enjoy yourself. Hopefully go play a Pokemon game. Hopefully this inspires you to even make some art for Smogist as well. So go check out the rest of our content and enjoy your day. Peace, love, and hugs to you all. Bye!